Hi, and welcome back to The Gardening Me. I'm Margaret, and today I am going to be sowing eight different varieties of kale. In the past, what I've usually done when choosing which kale varieties to sow is look through my stash, I'll choose maybe two or three different varieties, and I'll sow maybe two or three plants for each. But this year I decided to do something different, not only with kale, but with a lot of the things that I'm growing. And that is concentrate more on variety rather than quantity. So I'm still going to be growing a lot of kale, but instead of doing several plants for each variety, I'm only going to be doing one plant for each variety. We're not a big family. There's only four of us here and there's only so much kale we can eat throughout the season and in the winter. I do freeze quite a lot of it at the end of the season and I do take advantage obviously of when it's growing during the season. But eight plants is actually quite a lot. I really wanted to try this because I've never done that and I thought it would be fun to just give them all a go and to compare and contrast because usually I'm doing that but only between two or three varieties. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'll go through the varieties that I'm going to be growing first and then we're going to go downstairs and I am going to sow them and show you how I do that. And I've also taken quite a few photos in the past of different varieties that I've grown. So if I do have a photo that I can find for that variety, I will throw it on the screen as we talk about each one. So the first variety is white Russian kale. And I have the packet right here. I don't know how clearly you guys can see that. This one I got from Pine Tree Seeds and I got it back in 2015. So we're looking at seven years I've had this. If there's actually only a couple of seeds left in it, last year I sowed, I don't know, four or five seeds and I think I had close to 100% germination. I only have, I think, two or three seeds left, so we'll see. Hopefully, you know, we get at least one of those to germinate. This one grows from seedling to fully mature plant in around 50 days. Normally I grow all of my plants to full maturity. I don't really harvest kale as a baby green, although you obviously can do that. The next is actually a free packet here that I got from Baker Creek Seeds. This is red Russian, or as they call it, Russian red, and they also refer to it as Ragged Jack. So sometimes you will see that where it's the same variety but different seed companies have a slightly different name. So sometimes it's the same variety, sometimes it isn't. So you sort of have to double check sometimes if you see something with a slightly different name if it's the same thing or not. So Red Russian. I know I do have a photo of that one, so I'll put it up on the screen now. So this one is about 50 days to maturity. And what I really like about Red Russian is the fact that it is so tender. And it's great for salads and it's great for cooking as well. I mean, all kale I find actually is great for cooking to throw in soups and stews and things like that. So another great variety is Red Ursa. And I have this one there. And this one I got from High Mowing Seeds. And I got this one back in 2016. All my kale is ancient. You buy one packet, that's the thing. You buy one packet of these things and you literally have seeds for seven, eight, nine years. And even if you only buy one packet, a lot of these have like what, 40, 50 seeds, something like that. And while well, they did, <laughs> They used to. I think lately with all the seed shortages and things like that, a lot of seed packets actually have slightly fewer seeds than they used to. But in the olden days, you'd get quite a few. Last year, I had awesome germination with Red Ursa. It was actually 100%, even though the seeds are six years old. So, and the plants grew really well. Let me tell you, see, that's another thing with sowing old seed. The fact is that it may germinate, and I've had actually this issue specifically with lettuce in particular, where it germinates, but the vigor of the seed is so bad that it doesn't really amount to much. I've never had that issue with kale. The other thing with Red Ursa is that I find it's an incredibly tender kale, even when it's at the full size leaf stage. It's 
delicious in salads and this is one that takes about 65 days so it's a little bit longer than the typical other kales we've been talking about which are all around the 50 day mark next on the list is another pine tree also bought in 2016 and this one here is star boar this one is actually a super quick variety this one only takes 45 days to get to maturity the other thing about starbor is it's also a bit smaller of a kale it only gets to be around 12 or so inches tall versus the other varieties which can get up to 24 inches tall but one of the most interesting things that I haven't actually seen written about, but that I've observed in my own garden about this particular kale variety is that at the end of the growing season, when some of my kales sometimes get powdery mildew, especially if we're in a very high humidity kind of rainy period there at the end of August and into September, Starbor doesn't get that. So if you have an issue with powdery mildew on kale, I would highly suggest that you try this variety. Next up we have Lacinato Kale. And there it is. I got this one from Greta's Garden, which is a seed house here in Ontario. This one is 60 days to harvest and it's a particularly good kale for stir frying now and stoops and stews i mean all kales are great for that i don't particularly like it in salads but i mean some people may like it in salads you might as well give it a try and this one is actually also known to be very winter hardy um, so if you want to grow kale at the end of the season and harvest it over some of the colder months of winter there this is a good choice okay i'm back from a few technical issues my battery on the camera ran out and i don't have a spare so i charged it for 15 minutes and hopefully i can wrap this up before it goes dead again okay so the next kale that i am going to be doing is called beta tronchuda and it is a kale that i have always used in a portuguese soup called caldo verde which is essentially uh, the soup uses kind of a very very finely shredded kale and this is the guy here this is my oldest packet that i have i think uh yeah this one is 2014 crazy so there's only a few seeds left in here as well. And the thing is, I have another variety. I went to Portugal back in 2018 and bought a bunch of seeds, of course, and I picked up, I'm not sure actually, if it's the same thing or if it's something different. It's this guy here. And this, I don't know whether that's focused or not. This is, it's called Beta Tronchuda or no, that's not what it's called. It's called Tranchuda Portuguesa Especial, which I'm kind of translating to mean special uh, Tranchuda kale. So I thought I would do a comparison and grow one of these and one of the other ones. And last but not least is another kale variety that I also got in Portugal. And this one actually says it is the official kale to be used in that Portuguese soup called beer. And it's this guy here, and it's called Galega Lisa. So we'll see how that turns out. I'm not sure what the difference is going to be between this and the other variety, but we'll see. Okay, so without any further ado, let's go downstairs and get sewing. So I have all our kale packets here. And the first thing I'm gonna do actually is I am going to do the labels for these before I get my hands all dirtied up. Half the time I remember this, half the time I forget this. Today I'm remembering. Now I'm gonna fill up the containers. I am using here these guys. They're four cell packs and the size is 48 um, per tray. I am sewing one variety per cell and in most cases I will be using two seeds in each cell except for in a couple of situations. Now the ones that I got from Portugal 
these guys, I am going to be doing more. There are a ton, ton, ton of seeds in here. And last year I sowed another, like a heading cabbage that was um, from one of these packets together with another heading cabbage. I think I did two heading cabbages from these packets. One of them had 100% germination, one had no germination. So I have no idea what the story is on these. So I'm gonna be, so for each cell, I'm gonna be sowing four of these. And the other ones that I'll be sewing more than two are the ones that are super old. So this is the um, Tronchuda kale that I got from William Dan Seeds. This I got in 2014. I will sow three or four seeds, probably four seeds. Whatever's left, I'm just going to give away to other people because you can still sow these later on in the season. I'm going to a um, it's kind of a seed swap type thing in a couple of weeks and I will know by then if these germinate or not and if they all germinate fine, then I will just give those away because it is, I mean, 2014, we're talking eight years. I think it's done its time. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. I'm using ProMix in here. I've dampened it up. It is damp. It's holding its shape, but it's not very watery or overly wet. Just enough to hold its shape, but then it falls apart easily. So I'm going to fill these up like so. And that's good. Just press it down so you get rid of any air pockets. But uh, you're not compacting the soil. Okay, I just went to wash my hands because I don't want to be touching these seeds and packets with dirty hands. So now it's time to sow. Kale seed needs to be sown approximately half an inch deep. So I'm using my trusty chopstick here. And what I like doing is I'll just make holes in each of the cells. There we go. Okay, so I just organized all my seed packets and my labels so I could kind of put them in in the right order here. And I remembered which ones only had two seeds and I'm gonna, I just decided I'm gonna do four seeds and all the others. I have plenty of seed. So there we go, all labeled. Okay, now we're gonna start sowing. Red Ursa is first. That one had 100% germination last year. It's gonna go into the cell that I only put a couple of holes in for two seeds. So we're done, all sewn. And so I have all these little holes here and all I'm gonna go is just push the soil back and cover them all up. Now, the one thing with members of the brassica family that I've sometimes had issues with in the past is damping off. And there's lots of ways to minimize the chances of damping off including making sure you're using fresh soil, making sure your cell packs or containers that you're using are disinfected. Um, and another way is adding a little bit of vermiculite to the top. I do this with a lot of my seeds, but I take extra precautions when we are talking about certain ones like kale that I have had rather serious issues in the past. Now in the past, it's probably four or five years, but I have had serious issues with damping off. And I do another preventative, which seems to work for me. Now, this isn't something that I've scientifically tested. I've I read about it. I've been doing it. It seems to work. So I've just continued to do it. And that is just sprinkling a little bit of cinnamon on top with it, which is an antifungal agent. 
or something to that effect. So before I do the vermiculite, I sprinkle on a little bit of the cinnamon just all over the top like that. Oops, there we go. Okay. So I do that first. Now I cover that with the vermiculite. And I don't really have to be particularly gentle with this because unlike a lot of the other things that I put vermiculite on top of which um, are surface sewn and require light to germinate, that's not the case with kale. The last thing is spraying with a bit of water. I do this just because the vermiculite is quite dry, not quite dry, extremely dry, and this just helps saturate it a bit so that it's not drawing moisture out of the soil. The last thing I do is I actually bottom water these. And I put them, I have a little container that I do just specifically when I'm doing a few cell packs. So now the issue becomes where to put these. Brassicas are cool weather crops. So the first inclination would simply be to put them at room temperature and let them germinate from there. The interesting thing though is that they actually prefer significantly warmer temperatures in order to germinate than they do to actually grow. So the optimum germination temperature is 24 to 29 degrees Celsius. And just contrast that to the temperatures that they prefer to grow in, which is significantly less. We're looking at the high teens to low 20s. So that is why I will be putting this, not this, these guys, on a heat mat. And I will have that heat mat set to a temperature of approximately Mm, 27, 28 degrees, something like that. And they are really quick germinators as well. I should expect to see something coming up after only three days or so. And that's about it. So thank you so much for joining me today and we will see you soon. Bye for now. So that was right. So that was white water. So that was white Russian kale, tongue twister.